arithmetic average of the lambda i's that's 2 to the n r this is the max of the lambda i's and lambda i is the probability w hat of y n not equal to i given that w equals i and the channel use we're thinking of is this we send w in the one of two to the n r alternatives based on that we use our encoding function to choose which code word to send, which waveform to send. It goes into this memoryless channel, P of Y given X, and out comes YN, where the I component here is a noisy measurement of the I input XI. So that's why it's called a memoryless channel. YI depends only on the current XI. And then on there, based on YN, we have W hat of YN, and that's in the set 2 to the NR. So we go from integer to integer, and we have a probability of error for blocks of length n for this code is probability w hat not equal to w. Right. That's well defined as soon as you put a probability distribution on w. So what's random here is w is random. And YN is random, and nothing else is random. But we're going to design a good encoding scheme by actually making these X assignments to the W's at random. It's called a random coding. This is one of the, maybe the first use of this technique was in the original paper. That symmetrizes the problem and so on. And for the decoding W hat, we will say W hat equals W if YN and XN are jointly typical. So that thus motivated, we will define jointly typical and prove the key facts about it. So today we'll prove the achievability of rates less than capacity. Definition. A epsilon super n. It is uh, well, let's say the jointly typical set with respect to P of X comma Y, the joint distribution on X, Y, is given by the following, A epsilon super N. It's a set of all sequences of length n of xn and yn.
Off to the side here, I'm imagining X I Y I R I I D according to P of X Y. That's not necessary for the definition, but if the if their IID with respect to I of X Y uh, with respect to P of X Y, then I would expect uh, them to be individually typical and jointly typical, which is to say. that P of X super N is in the set 2 to the minus N H of X plus or minus epsilon. I like this notation. It says this real number lies in the interval defined by 2 to the minus n h uh, plus epsilon and 2 to the minus n h minus epsilon. Right. So that's an interval. So if x is such that the probability of mass on that sequence is 2 to the minus n h, then it's individually typical, and we've used that before for the AEP. Similarly, you want this to be true. 2 to the minus n hy plus or minus epsilon. And the key is you want the joint distribution. be the joint distribution that you define the typicality with respect to. So you want the probability mass on this pair of sequences to be 2 to the minus n h of x comma y plus or minus epsilon. Close curly bracket. Here's an example. Here's X, here's Y. Let's have probability half half here. And this is a binary symmetric channel. This will be a half-half here. And it turns out that the joint distribution, P of X, Y, uh, will be... If x is 1, then y is 1 with probability a half p bar. So this is p bar over 2, and this is p over 2. This is p over 2, and this is p bar over 2. Now, H of X is one. The entropy is one. It's fifty. It's a fair coin. So um, we just uh, demand that the probability mass on X is close to two to the minus n times one, two to the minus n. But all the probability masses are two to the minus n. So all of the sequences. X are individually typical. So the X's are typical, all the Y's are typical, but not all the XY pairs are typical. What do you think? 
to have X and Y jointly typical, you must have that X minus Y uh, they differ in NP places, plus or minus epsilon prime. So, um, what is this, Euclidean distance? Yeah, Euclidean distance equals Hamming distance, right? because one squared is one. So, um, less than, oh, in the interval, N P plus or minus epsilon prime, that is, from this epsilon, you can see what it means for that one. Okay. So, you would demand that if this is uh, xn and this is yn, that Uh, Yn fall within a sphere of radius NP about Xn. Uh, I'm more comfortable writing the square of this. I don't know why. But they're the same. Yes, yeah, I am. This is the summation of xi minus yi squared i equals 1 to n. And whenever it differs, it puts a 1 here. Other, when it's the same, you get a 0. So this is the proportion. Um, this is the number of places in which x and y differ. Now, we proved the following theorem. If x i y i are i i d according to p of x y, then the following statements are true. One, the probability that such a random pair of sequencers is considered to be typical goes to one. Two, so in other words, the probability uh, that X and Y are typical is nearly one. Two. The number of jointly typical sequences is less than or equal to two to the N H of it of the entropy of the pair, plus or minus, ooh, plus epsilon. So there aren't very many typical, or jointly typical X, Y. You can argue, and we won't hear, but you can, it's easy enough, that not only is this true, but uh, the number of elements is greater than this with a minus epsilon here and a one minus epsilon in front. So. And three, if in fact X n tilde and Y n tilde uh, 